In our last video, we saw how to find the operating point when two pumps operate in parallel, but it ended with the question, what do I do with the required NPSH? Good question was the answer, but we said that we'd leave it for the next video. Well, this is the next video. Let's fulfill our promise. But let me introduce myself. My name is Marcus. I am a retired professor of hydraulics. Now I'm a consultant engineer of many companies that deal with hydraulic supply to sanitation works. Okay, now this is the system that we are studying. Two pumps that run in parallel and a third one on standby. We know the pump chart and the contribution of each one of the pumps. That will be half of the total flow. For this contribution, we found that the corresponding required NPSH was 0.65 meter. Now, this is what happens at the section of each pump. When we consider that the absolute head at the section sump is imposed by the atmospheric pressure, and we subtract the automatic section head and the section head losses at the section pipe and fittings, the required NPSH is the value that would make the head in the interior of the pump equal to the absolute vapor head. In other words, the available NPSH must be greater than the required NPSH, or a cavitation will happen inside the pump. This is what we call available NPSH. It's the absolute net head that we deliver to the pump. Of course, it must be greater than the required NPSH, or vapor cavities will form inside the pump, bringing all the terrible consequences that we must avoid. There is a specific video in this channel about this topic. I'll leave its link in the description. But let's come back to our case. Here is our pumping installation. The absolute atmospheric pressure can be estimated through this expression. We've seen it in another video in this channel about this topic. I'll leave its link in the description. When we substitute the value, we find the head that we need. Let's bring it to the top. The section head is this one. Let's bring it to the top too. Now we can calculate the head losses at the suction pipe and fittings using the flow of each pump, of course. And here is what we find. Let's bring it to the top too. The absolute head corresponding to the vapor pressure can be found in tables like this. Assuming that the water temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, we find the absolute vapor pressure, which can be transformed into the head that we need. Now we've got everything we need. We substitute the values, and here it is, the available NPSH. When we compare it to the required NPSH, we find that it's greater, so cavitation will not occur. So far, so good. We're becoming experts in pumping installations. But there are cases in which we still don't have the pump chart. We're still getting started with our studies, but it's important to know if the elevations are okay. Assuming we don't have access to the pump charts, can we at least estimate the required NPSH? Good question. The answer is yes. But first, we must talk about the impeller type as a function of its specific velocity. We'll leave this matters for the next videos. See you there! Oh, and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, comment, share and subscribe. Hit the bell so you can be notified of my next videos.